What's up? Today we're about to see a really amazing game where an opponent of Robert Fisher really thought that he's about to deliver a kind of scholar's checkmate to Fisher, but then something interesting has happened. Let's figure it out together. So Fisher was playing white here, representing the US, that was the game from the Chess Olympics, and the black player is Bednarski from Poland. So Fisher starts off with the move e4, best by test as he called it. Now we're going into the Sicilian defense, the knight operation is going to appear, the most popular line of the Sicilian defense, here it is, and Fischer went for his favorite line, bishop c4, which is one of the most aggressive ways to handle this, taking aim at this vulnerable square, trying to get to the king, and black blocks the diagonal by playing pawn e6. And uh, here white played a prophylactic move bishop to b3, just because fairly often this bishop can be attacked by black by something like pawn d5 or pawn b5 or even queen c7 and therefore it's typical in this variation to drop the bishop back just in case. After that black played knight d7 and now pawn f4. White's plan here is to try to unblock this diagonal by playing f5, removing this pawn from e6 and ultimately get to black's king. Black responded knight c5, counter-attacking this pawn on e4, it's attacked twice, and it looks like white needs to defend it. But instead, Fischer decided to counter-attack black's pawn on e6 by playing pawn f5. So Fischer is just relentlessly pushing his plan forward. And here black took on e4, black took this pawn, Fischer recaptured on e6, and that's that amazing moment of the game that I was talking about just a minute ago. At this point, a black player probably thought that Fischer simply blundered a checkmate, because Fischer probably anticipated something like this, you know, a continue of this trade, but instead all of a sudden black played queen h4 and just look at this, black is about to deliver kind of scholar's checkmate on this f2 square. So if white moves the king somewhere, doesn't really matter, there is just queen f2 and this is, whoops, checkmate, and that's how black was hoping to beat by the Fischer. Instead, of course, Akini 2 just loses the game right away, so White's get to play pawn g3, but that also loses, seems to lose to another common tactics, knight takes g3. Black still opens up this diagonal, and they're also taking advantage of the pin. Because of the pin, White cannot easily capture the knight, so White can, but that'll lose the rook here, check to the king, and here Black is winning, is winning material, continuing the attack, that is completely winning for Black. So taking this back, looks like at this point black is just overwhelmingly winning because, you know, now this rook is hanging. If the rook moves, there is a lot black can do, black can capture this pawn or even better to just come back to this color's checkmate idea. 94 check to the king and on the next move after the king moves somewhere, queen of two, still the same color's checkmate theme. So that's what black was calculating and was hoping for, but let's take it back and let's see what happened in the game. All right, so after black uh, delivered this check, and white played pawn g3, here it is, black indeed, captured right here on g3. And now Fischer started playing a series of more surprising moves. So first of all, he found an interesting counter-strike knight of 3 hitting the queen. And although the knight can possibly move somewhere, capture the rook or something like that, black would lose their queen here on h4, that doesn't look good, so black just removed the queen back, maintaining this pin, and therefore the knight can still, uh, still can't be captured. Fischer then played one more in-between move, pawn takes f7, check to the king, went in pawn, forcing the king to move, and now, only in this position, Fischer finally moved his rook away from the danger, rook g1, attacking the knight. And it turns out that, well, what can black do now? The knight is currently under an attack, and black can't capture this pawn anymore because it is defended. Therefore, black has nothing to do but to move the knight back to f5. And now when the dust settles and we can evaluate the position, first of all, white skin was not checkmated. Moreover, black skin got also exposed and kind of seems equal, equally vulnerable compared to white skin. But also white is just way more active overall, and of course there is this really strong pawn on the f7 square, very close to the square of promotion. Uh, therefore, it looks like white has a strong advantage here. But Fischer played another interesting move, probably unexpected by black. Fischer decided to give up this pawn on f7, which looked like one of the main assets of white here, and he just played for the bold attack, knight d5. This takes away a couple squares from black's king, and therefore white wants to continue the attack, but that loses this pawn on f7, so black gladly captured it. But now after bishop to g5, check to the king, it turns out that white is simply going after the king. King went here back to e8, now queen e2, this time check along the e-file, black covered it, and now knight f4, white is taking advantage of this pin and is trying to win the bishop because it's attacked multiple times. 
because of the pin the bishop cannot move, so black had to defend it and play king to d7. And that's another interesting moment where I like to discuss with you for just a second so that we can really learn something from Fisher besides just enjoying his game. Like, how would you play here if you're white? Just think about this for a second. This is your turn. How would you play here? I'm pretty sure that most players in a position like that would grab this bishop on e6, something like knight takes e6 or bishop takes e6. I've noticed that very often when there is an opportunity to exchange something, in most cases people actually go for that exchange. And, strangely enough, in most cases that is a mistake. There is a rule that I've been preaching for a long time which says to take is a mistake. Usually it doesn't make sense to force an exchange for the sake of an exchange unless you have certain advantage that you gain out of it. But just an exchange alone is not really what you should be doing. Rather, you should maintain the tension. And that's what Fisher did. Instead of capturing here on a6, he simply castled queenside, keeping all the threats alive and forcing black to think about them. Moreover, now white has one more threat. If black decides to, okay, now I can just trade this bishop off, how would you play here as white? By the way, please think about this and write it in the comments down below. Let's have it as a puzzle of the day. How would you play here as white? Is white to move? And you may try to find the winning shot. In the game, black did not play that move. Instead, black played queen to e8. And now, Fisher started an exchange. You may wonder, hey Igor, but you just said don't trade. Well, in this case, that's not just an exchange. Fisher calculated the winning line here. After bishop takes and knight takes, instead of just keep trading here, Fisher played the move queen e4 which attacks black in multiple directions. And because of that, black is kind of defenseless. Uh, black needs to defend this knight on f5, which is what he did. But now this pawn on b7 falls. Fisher first took here on a6, and black actually resigned because after queen takes c6, there is queen takes b7, check to the king, attack of the rook, and white is overwhelmingly winning. If the king goes back, white could take the rook, or could even play rook e1 and, you know, capture the queen as well thanks to this pin and then capture the rook and checkmate, so that is just completely winning for white. And just to recap and to learn the main takeaway from this game, I think one of them is that offense is the best defense and it's really useful to learn this thing. Starting right here from the position right in the opening, where black attacked this pawn on e4 twice, what would most players do? And you may ask yourself, what would you do here in this position? A lot of players would notice that the pawn is attacked and would defend it somehow, something like queen e2 you know, or queen to f. Three. But instead, what Fisher did was to counterattack. He asked himself, how do I attack first? Right, And he decided, hey, he's attacking my pawn, I'm gonna attack his. Now, after knight takes e4, here's once again this rule to take is a mistake. Lots of players, I believe, would just trade here the knights. But you don't need to trade when there is no good reason to, when you don't get any advantage out of this exchange. So he followed the rule to take as a mistake. And he just captured the pawn. That's not just an exchange, that is winning of the pawn. After queen h4 check, still he didn't think, okay, how do I retreat? He thought, how do I keep attacking? So he played g3, hitting the queen. After that, knight to f3, counterattacking once again. Now, counterattacking black's king and finally playing here to attack the knight. You see that he was trying to attack with his every move instead of thinking, how do I defend? And that's what allowed him to overpower black and ultimately to win such a bright game. And if you want to learn how to incorporate more of such strategies and elevate your chess, then let me remind you that you can still join the course The Grandmaster's Position to Understanding. We're going to close the doors very soon, but right now you can still join the current cohort of students. The course will share everything that you need to know about the positional play, which is the main component of a strong chess player. And since we're launching it right now, you can get access uh, to the course at a 50% discount. You also get two other courses for free. You get access to our closed community of students where you can ask your questions directly to me and to other students and get them answered, get the support that you need to progress in chess. So if you're interested, click the link below the video or somewhere on the screen and join us right now while the enrollment is still open. And whatever you choose to do, keep crushing it and I'll talk to you soon.